Hi there, and welcome to the Parkinson's Disease Education Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about nicotine and its potential benefits in helping to manage not only the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, but also potentially to help with slowing down the progression of the disease itself. Buckle up and get ready for the ride of looking at nicotine in treating Parkinson's disease. Let's go. Welcome to the Parkinson's Disease Education Show, where we demystify the disease and empower you as the person with Parkinson's disease to reach your true potential. The content contained on this show is for informational purposes only and is not meant to be a replacement for information or advice that you receive from your in-person medical or therapy professionals. If you haven't already, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And for an even more personalized experience, please ask us about our memberships. Now, without further ado, let's start the show. Well, first of all, I feel like we need a little bit of a preamble, if you will, and talk a little bit about what we mean when we say nicotine. So, obviously, I'm not advocating that you start smoking tomorrow. What we're talking about is other ways to supplement nicotine, and we're going to get to that in a little while. But first of all, I wanted to talk about the potential benefits of nicotine and how that might work. We're going to talk about five key areas in which nicotine may have potential benefits for persons with Parkinson's disease. We're also going to go into, of course, some limitations and some precautions before you start considering using something like nicotine to treat Parkinson's. Before we start talking about the benefits, I wanted to mention that most of the time when we're talking about complementary and alternative treatments to Parkinson's disease, we're really talking about a crowd that really wants to limit or eliminate their use of medication to treat Parkinson's disease. These shouldn't be considered something that would be done necessarily alongside Parkinson's medications, but maybe as a replacement or an alternative to those. As in the case of methylene blue that we talked about in our previous episode, it really doesn't mix well with Parkinson's medications. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that and mention that a second time, especially the MAOB inhibitors, but even levodopa could be contraindicated to use alongside methylene blue. In the case of nicotine, we'll have those considerations as well. Let's go ahead and go into the five potential benefits, the main ones we're going to talk about in this episode as regards to nicotine and Parkinson's disease. So the first is neuroprotection. It's thought that nicotine may actually stimulate the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors and through that mechanism protect the dopamine producing cells from further degeneration. Obviously, if you could prevent those cells from further degenerating, you could potentially slow down or halt the progression of Parkinson's. The second is dopamine modulation. Nicotine is known to help dopamine release. So therefore you could improve both motor and non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease through stimulation with nicotine. It could also potentially reduce the need for medication or reduce the levels you need to take to manage those symptoms. Next is reduction of dyskinesia. Some studies suggest a potential benefit of nicotine to help with levodopa-induced dyskinesia, which is a common side effect of long-term use of levodopa, which we talked about in a previous episode here. The fourth is cognitive benefits. So it's thought that nicotine may improve attention, memory, and executive function. So if you're having mild cognitive impairment, especially if it's early in your Parkinson's diagnosis, nicotine may be a benefit to you. Now, we mentioned those uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors earlier. If it stimulates those receptors, that's also going to uh, be a part of the reason why you may have the benefit of improved uh, cognition and attention, because acetylcholine directly impacts attention and memory. And as you may or may not recall, acetylcholine has a deficit in Parkinson's disease because decreased dopamine production also affects acetylcholine and serotonin levels. Lastly, Nicotine may actually help lower your risk of developing Parkinson's in the first place. There's actually a lot of studies that have found that smokers have a lower incidence of Parkinson's disease. So even though smoking is obviously not being recommended, uh, the potential protective role of nicotine is obvious in that case. So the main forms of non-smoking nicotine delivery are through, of course, patches and gums, which are typically used for smoking cessation, but they certainly could be used by a person with Parkinson's disease to manage symptoms and uh, all the benefits we talked about. Now, even though there's limited evidence to the benefits that we've talked about here, there is a lot of anecdotal evidence that this helps. And uh, I've, I've talked to multiple people um, through comments on the YouTube channel and live streams and so forth that 
speak to the benefits of nicotine for their cognitive function, as well as energy levels and so forth. So what side effects are there to using nicotine? One of the most common is nausea, uh, but you can also have cardiovascular effects from nicotine as well, increased heart rate, for example. And some folks may occasionally experience things like chest tightening, although I think that's more individual than it is a common side effect. So as far as how much evidence that there is, again, I mentioned there's limited studies on this, there has been a trial, a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study that was called the NIC-PD trial, NICPD, and the Michael J. Fox Foundation has some information about that. Um, other than that, um, it's been mainly done in animal studies and it's preclinical trials, meaning we don't have a, any human trials basically showing that it truly does slow the progression of the disease. There's, there's definitely more research to be done, but I think it's exciting that this is even being considered as potentially helpful, and that tells me they probably will continue to do research on it. So there you have it. Let me know what you think about nicotine, and if you've used nicotine to treat your symptoms of Parkinson's disease, what benefits you've noticed, and if you think other people should try it as well. Looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. As always, be empowered. I'll catch you next time.